Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Hunter. Uh, this video is being shot in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, mid, well, let's see, I guess it's mid-November, and uh, at a friend of mine's workshop. Talk a little bit about the history of the company. We go back to 2006. Um, <clears throat> I was originally, uh, well, the full story is, there was one Thanksgiving morning I was doing some wood turning and not getting anywhere with what I was turning. Now in my career I sold metal cutting tools, drills, taps, end mills, so I was uh, uh, you know, knowledgeable in the uh, field of cutting metal. So on this uh, piece of wood on uh, Thanksgiving morning where I was not getting anywhere, all I did is I stepped back, I looked at what I was cutting, and the question I asked and then answered was how would I cut this if it was a piece of metal. So I made a few tools up locally, started selling them on a regional basis, and then submitted it to a couple of distributors who rejected it because they said nobody would ever pay $100 for a tool. In 2006, <clears throat> I went to a symposium out in Mesa, Arizona. When I got there, I found out about a swap meet out in the parking lot and uh, there was a individual, his name is Fred Holder, and he owned a small uh, wood turning magazine called More Wood Turning. Uh, basically, uh, you know, he purchased a tool, said, if this tool works, I'll write an article in my magazine. And at that point, I did not know Fred Holder and didn't know anything, and had never heard of his little uh, uh, magazine. Uh, two months later, there was a three-page article uh, written by Fred, and then uh, I submitted that article to a couple of the distributors, and within a week I had orders for uh, you know, 100, 100 pieces at a time. Um, <clears throat> so from there, uh, you know, we have quite a few tools that have evolved on our product line. So let me flip my notes here. And uh, some of the features, the benefits of the tools is uh, we use what we call a cup cutter. Uh, we do not cut scrape wood, we actually cut wood. And we excel at end grain, that's our strong suit for hollowing. Uh, we do well on side grain, we cut bark inclusions, exotic, dense woods, bring them on. And uh, you know, we, we do feature where we make very good controlled precision cuts. So we're going to start out this morning, or what we're going to do today is run through uh, five or six, or no, it's more like uh, seven or eight of the popular tools, and then talk about the features and benefits, and then I've got a video of each tool. So our first tool we're going to talk about <clears throat> is what we call the, uh, the number one taper tool. And this is an uh, ideal tool for uh, small cuts and for hollowing. So Dick, if you could start the hollowing video. We're gonna start out by cutting a cove on the outside of this tool. Note that the cutter is at about a 45 degree angle. Next we're going to switch over to doing some hollowing on the inside. Note the cutter is at a, about a 45 degree angle. and we'll do light controlled cuts with this tool. See the very light cuts that we're taking? We're just opening up the bottom of that hollow form. Being careful here, most mistakes are made when hollowing, when bringing the tool in and bringing the tool out. 
The next tool we're going to talk about is what we call the C-hook tool. And if we were doing uh, like a Christmas ornament, we would use the number one taper straight tool to open up in the bottom of an ornament. The next step is to get into the belly area of an ornament. Uh, so then we would use what we call the, uh, the C-hook tool. And uh, it's used for you know, like I said, getting down in the uh, lower belly area of a Christmas ornament. And Dick, you could start the video there. Ready? Okay. This is the number one tapered hook tool. And for setting up for this, when it is laying on the tool rest and the tool handle parallel with the lathe bed, I want the cutting tip to be on the center axis and to start this cut I'm going to be rolling this tool over to about 730 so when I enter this tool into the wood it doesn't just start cutting immediately. I want to start just getting that cutter to cut and then I'll raise it up to about 8 o'clock and just make my cut. The tool is at about 7.30. I'm going to start cutting very lightly. Then I'll rotate the tool to about 8 o'clock and just take light cuts to hollow the inside here. The material comes out very quickly so there's no no need for heavy cuts in here. So let's give it a shot and see what we got. I'm in at 7.30. I'm just grabbing onto the wood. I can raise the tool up to about 8 o'clock. Now again, this is cut out so that you can see what the cutter is doing in here. This is for a solid piece, a little vessel or an ornament. I would want to keep the shaving cleaned up. If I bring that tool up to 9 o'clock on the clock, it is going to be very catchy and grabby, so I keep it angled at about 8 o'clock for a nice clean cut through here with this hook tool. At this angle, it's very, very controllable. Okay, so the next tool we're going to talk about is what we call the back, back tool. And the back tool is used for getting right underneath the shoulder. Uh, most of us um, will use Allen wrenches and we'll grind up an Allen wrench to get underneath that shoulder area. Well, this tool has an unusual uh, tilt angle to, on it, which allows you to get into that back tool or uh, uh, to the shoulder area of a Christmas ornament or a small hollow form. And Dick, if you could start that. Okay, go. Okay, this is the number one tapered shoulder tool. And while setting it up, I want, while I'm doing the cutting, I want the straight part of the, the shank. cuts with the bit facing me, I can come in and pull it towards myself as I'm making this cut to clean up that inside shoulder with this cutter. And I'm taking very light cuts. So let's give it a shot. Carefully enter the tool. And I'm taking a very light cut. Right now I'm pushing. And I can also do a full cut. There's a very clean cut through here. And that hard to get inside shoulder cut is now simplified with this cut. Okay, now the next tool we're going to talk about is what we call the Viceroy. Um, we have two sizes of the Viceroy. Uh, when the video was shot, uh, we originally had three sizes, but uh, we're, we, uh, in reality, 
we wound up with use just going with the uh, the half inch viceroy and the five eighths viceroy. Um, <clears throat> this tool is really directed to the uh, new wood turner or the occasional wood turner. Uh, it's a very easy tool to use. Uh, we have a couple of uh, professionals that, uh, when they're doing their bowl turning classes, um, generally with a new turner, they have no problem using conventional high speed steel on the outside of a bowl. But where they run into trouble is uh, turning the inside diameter of a bowl or a platter. And <clears throat> so that's, this is one area that this tool really shines. Basically, on a uh, bowl, drill a hole down the depth, and then hollow, uh, or, or do your yeah, do your hollowing really from outside towards towards the center or left to right in conventional turning. Um, <clears throat> for the new and the occasional wood turner, uh, it's a I don't know, let's just call it a very easy tool to learn and one that uh, has a very short learning curve. So at the end of the day, um, you know, at the, if you're taking some lessons to turn a, let's just say an eight inch by three inch bowl, uh, and uh, if you walk home with a bowl, you're happy and the instructor is happy. So let's see that video, Dick. I'll probably have some follow-up comments after the video. This is an introduction of the Hunter Tools, the Viceroy. We have three different sizes available. We have a 3 8 a half inch, and a 5 8 Also includes a T9 wrench so that you can adjust your cutter. If you're using it quite a bit and it gets a little dull, just loosen, rotate the cutter, tighten it up, and you're ready to go again. Okay, the setup of the Viceroy tool on here, what I'm going to be after is with the tool handle parallel to the lathe bed, I want to bring my cutter up and I want the edge of the cutter to be cutting on center. And we're doing cross grain to start with here and we're just going to make a few cuts to show how easy this cuts. The first cut in here and I'm just going to start taking out a little bit of the bowl and making it a little deeper. I'm actually riding a bevel here on the edge of this tip of making this cut. Normally a bowl gouge would be used for this. This does just as well as the bowl gouge. It can take it out very quickly, as you can see. One of the nice things about this Viceroy tool is if I wanted to undercut this bowl and come in here, I can reach in where it would be difficult for me to get a bowl gouge to do that at that angle. And I can undercut and follow through. Again, nice light touch to start with. And follow through. Having the tool set up right on center makes it real easy at the end of my cut. I'm using a Viceroy tool for a shear cut, all four corners are radius, and I can easily lay that tool up on its side and just come in here for a very light finish cut, a nice shear cut. You can see those angel hair shaving just coming off. Which will leave a very nice finish on the wood. And now we're going to use the Viceroy tool on some ingrain hollowing. Normally I would drill a pilot hole through here to the depth of what I'm going to do, but here I'm just going to take it out with the cutter. Anchor that tool to the tool rest. Cutter bit is on center. Just start my cut and then follow through. And repeat. On these tools, we're using a number one cutter. The 
which is very user friendly. And it will take this out fairly quickly. You'll notice my left hand up on the tool rest, grabbing over the tool and controlling the depth of the tool. Okay, I'm not going to bother going any deeper on this, but what I want to show you is I'm basically using a step method for hollowing this, and also it'll be very easy to undercut this. Step one. So I always know where my cutter is, especially if I'm going in through a smaller opening. Now for cleaning this up again, I'll turn this over on its side and just do a sheer cut up the wall. Which will leave me a nice clean cut in there. All in all, it's a very versatile tool. It's a very easy tool to cut with. And Eliminates a lot of time with sanding if used properly and you can see the cuts that we have in there With the end grain, that's pretty darn smooth So there you have just some of the basics of the Viceroy tool Okay, uh, talk a couple of things on there uh, Mark brought up a little bit on uh, cutter rotation and to talk about cutter rotation my recommendation is every time you use the tool when you're done for the day just do a random rotation of the cutter and uh, basically take a safety pin, uh, clean the socket out of the Torx wrench. That way the Torx wrench will seat firmly into that socket area. Loosen the, the Torx screw and then just do a random rotation with the cutter because to say that you're going to rotate that tool, you know, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, it's almost impossible. Uh, and then when it starts to fuzz up, uh, just assume it's dull and then uh, put a new cutter in. People ask about tool life on these. Uh, every year I like to go to a wood turning symposium down in Texas. They call it SWAT, S -W, Southwest Area Wood Turners. Uh, <clears throat> they machine or turn a lot of uh, mesquite down there. It has a lot of sand and is a fairly abusive uh, abrasive material to cut. I've gone down there uh, one year a customer buys a tool see him the following year and he hasn't rotated that cutter at all and he calls himself an average wood turner so to me an average wood turner is going to be in a shop you know three or four times a week probably a couple hours at, at a time when he's out there and if he's still using that same tool same radius, same everything one year later. That's pretty good tool life. Also, if you are turning wet wood, um, always disassemble the tool and uh, put some lubrication on the screw threads. Uh, that uh, you know keeps the screw from rusting into the shaft. Okay, so the next tool we're going to talk about, uh, I've got it in my hand here, is uh, what we call the uh, the badger tool. If you're turning uh, boxes, small hollow forms, uh, southwest style of uh, vases, uh, these tools, these two tools are probably our most popular tools sold. So Dick, uh, if you could go ahead and just start the uh, the badger straight tool and then I'll talk some more after that video is run. This is the number five badger tool. And first things first, let's set the tool rest up to the proper height. And to do that, I'll lay my tool on so it's parallel with the lathe bed. And I'll bring my cutting tip right to the center line. And that'll be the height of the tool rest for the cut. To start the cuts, we will turn the tool at 730. And we will start our cut and follow through. If I were to start at 9 o'clock or 90 degrees, it would be very grabby and very catchy. So starting at 730, and I'll roll that tool up to 8, 830, till I find that sweet spot of cutting, and follow through the cut. That was a very light cut. These tools can 
also take off a lot of material quite quickly. And I'm still at that starting at 730. And turn it up to 830. Actually, I'm riding the bevel on this cutter which will result in a very clean cut. What we're after here, we're going to start shaping the top of this vessel. And I'll be bringing my tool in. I can come in from the outside and work my way in. And I can also okay, come ready. in. I am ready. All right. Now we're going to hollow this out with the number five badger. Again, starting right here in the center at 730, following through, I'm actually riding the bevel of the cutter on the wood. And actually, the harder the wood, the better these tools perform. Okay, and the uh, next tool we're going to talk about is what we call the Badger uh, Swan Neck. The Swan Neck has uh, an unusual tilt angle to the cutter. Um, it's already set at your 45 degree. Now, <clears throat> often when you're doing some hollowing, uh, people, are, you, know, you struggle as far as position of the cutter. And I don't know if it shows up here, but I just put a simple little dot on top of the ferrule, and that way I know exactly where that tool is when you're cutting. So let's just go right into that, uh, that video. So this would be the Badger Swan Neck. Go. Okay, this is the number five Swan Neck tool. And to set up for use on this, I'll make sure that the tool rest is back far enough so when I'm cutting with this tool, the main shaft is riding on the tool rest, not the tapered crook. And to make a cut with this, I'm going to be reaching in. You can see that the angle is already down at 730. And I'm just going to make a light cut through here. It can cut aggressively if you'd like it to, but I find the wood comes out quick enough by just making light cuts. It will also allow me to reach in there quite a ways. Just as smooth as can be. Keep the shavings cleaned off the tool so that I can see the cutter. And if it were a smaller opening, I would stop the, uh, the cutting quite often and keep those shavings cleaned out so as not to bind the tool while making the cut. That's it. Okay. Now Mark brought up a couple of points on uh, on hollowing tools uh, with the swan necks. You always want to make sure that you're riding on the shaft of the tool. If you start riding on the hook of the tool itself, uh, you know, it's going to, uh, the, the, the twist is going to work against you. But all of our hollowing tools with the swan neck, the cutter is exactly in line with the shaft. So always be, <clears throat> uh, be aware that you want to back the tool rest up to be on the center point, of, or be, yeah, if I can say this, to be on the shaft. Uh, same thing if going back to the, uh, uh, the number one taper tools, this is the back tool. The cutter is right in line with the shaft. The C-hook tool, it's right in line with the shaft also. So the next tool we're going to talk about is what we call the Osprey. This Osprey is uh, probably, those that do segmenting, segmenting are all familiar with this Osprey. 
Um, <clears throat> there's a uh, Lloyd Johnson who runs, uh, owns a company called Wood Turner Pro. It's a poplar segmenting uh, program. Uh, John from AccuSlice. Uh, they all just uh, really endorse and uh, support the use of this tool. It's a light finish cutting tool. So <clears throat> if you're doing uh, side grains, coves, um, <clears throat> You know, whatever you happen to be turning, it's used just like a gouge. If you're uh, cutting left to right, your cutting area is going to be in the, you know, 11.30 to 12 o'clock range. If you're going right to left, it's going to be about the, you know, roughly the 12.30 to 1 o'clock area. And you will be amazed on what kind of, how smooth your cuts will be. And for those that are doing segmenting, um, you know, once you stack up a few rings, and you want to go back and clean up those rings. And these, uh, uh, this tool is very popular with those people that are doing segmenting. So, uh, Dick, if you could start that segmenting video, or not segmenting, but the Osprey video. This is the number two Osprey. And I'm going to do side grain cutting here and just make a cove on this piece. With a round shaft, I can easily roll this tool in either direction. For the last cuts that I do on this, I'm going to go for a very light cut. I'm going to go for a light cut here, which will eliminate a lot of sanding time. Slightly chamfer these edges here with another small coat. And okay, and this will be the number two Osprey on face frame. And a very light cut. The face frame. It will remove the material quickly for you. And when I get down to a finished cut, let's just make a very light cut which will yield very little sanding. Okay, um, that about concludes the videos we have. Uh, these tools are available in the U.S. Uh, from huntertoolsystems.com or in Europe uh, from huntertoolseurope.com. Uh, uh, in Europe, they're uh, stocked locally in the U.K. and shipped uh, you know, from the UK. So anyways, I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to, uh, look forward to wood turning. <laughs> I guess that's a good way to wind up. So anyways, that's all I've got. And we are done.